The word entrepreneur has been thrown everywhere. It's like a sexy word. But entrepreneurship, it's very lonely. It's hard work. It's long hours of work. It's not for everybody. Some people are just better off being, you know, employees. Mm. Start trying and fail. Fail a lot, fail forward, and fail early. Because the earlier you, you come to failure, the earlier you come to success. Like people, I want to win the lottery. You gotta win the lottery. Six months, you're gonna be broke again because you don't have the mindset how to win the money. Mm. So you need to go through the process. And you know, people are obsessed with the results, not the journey and the process. You will always make more of it, but you need to have your peace of mind. Exactly. Yeah, peace is a luxury. Today, we are trying to have a special guest, Ahmed Ben Shaiba, the founder of Aquafun. Ahmed isn't just a successful entrepreneur, he's an inspiration to many. Diving deep into his entrepreneurial journey, he'll share with us the behind the scene of his venture, the heights, the lows, and the invaluable lessons he's picked up along the way. Découvrez l'univers des entrepreneurs, investisseurs et acteurs de l'immobilier de Dubaï à travers ce podcast. Rejoignez-nous pour des interviews percutantes avec des invités de premier plan qui partagent leurs secrets, leur expérience et leur vision pour réussir dans cette ville audacieuse et en constante évolution. Préparez-vous à être inspiré et motivé par les opportunités infinies que Dubaï offre aux esprits créatifs et ambitieux. Je suis Mouni Rejdal, welcome to Insider. Ahmed, bonjour. Bonjour. Thank you for coming in the, this podcast, Insider. Thank you for having me. And nice to meet you. Yes. So can you introduce yourself and tell our listeners about your background? So my name is Ahmed Ben Sheba. Um, I have a Guinness World Record for the largest inflatable water park in the world. I'm Entrepreneur of the Year, Emirate Business of the Year, and the CEO of the Year. For now. For now? For now. And for tomorrow? We will see. We will see. <laughs> yeah. And what made you want to be an entrepreneur? I had no choice. I was in a situation. I was uh, being redundant from my old job. I had a very big job and then... I did 73 interviews in three months. Nobody wants to take me. Educated, Emirati, uh, high experience. Uh, last job was senior director for a very big company. Nobody wants to hire me. And then said, okay, why am I doing this? Let me get my own business. Yeah. So you had the same story than COVID because you know- No, before, uh, this is before. This is yeah, I know, Lebanese almost. I know, yeah, but, yeah. but a lot of people, they yeah. became an entre entrepreneur during COVID time. Yeah, because they have no choice. Yeah, because yeah, no yeah, choice. Yeah. But again, there's different, a lot of people think they're entrepreneurs, but they are just self-employed. It's two different things. I know because, yeah. okay. They think they're entrepreneurs. But I have a question. Yeah. So, so, so for you, you become entrepreneur yeah. or uh, you born entrepreneur? I think I always had it in me because I was always very high performance. Yeah. And I was always very disciplined. I was very, you know, competitive. So I think I have these traits in the beginning of my life. So like, I think those just convert into naturally to this. And what is your journey as an entrepreneur? So many failures. So many. Like I failed hundreds of times. I want to know everything from- the, So many. From- You wake up until Oof, you sleep. So many. Like I, I always talk about this. My first year in, in business, I was rejected 617 times. Oh. So I met 617 people the first year, almost every day, two people. And every day I get, no, 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 no. Till the, the last day of my first year, that's when I made my first deal. So that's the first year alone. And then through the next, the next 11 years, I was bankrupt twice, sued 18 times, failed multiple, multiple times. But now we're the biggest one in the world. Yeah. One days. Yeah, yeah, so how many you have now? 11 years. What, how many what? Ah, uh, this, this is a good question. Yeah. How many, <laughs> how many business? <laughs> uh, how many businesses? Um, the main one people see is the Aqua Fund because that's yeah. the big, loud one. But we have other multiple businesses in the background. Yeah, yeah so yeah. you have different kind of business right now. Yes, yeah, yeah. The concept of leadership is crucial. Can you share your perspective of effective leadership and how it has influenced your company management? I think leadership is, I think um, I don't, I'm not afraid to have my hands dirty. Yeah. So the, I know everything in my business from the bottom up. So like, because there was one situation that we had a problem and all my assets was damaged. So I was on the beach with my team 14, 14 days under the sun, fixing with them, gluing things, carrying things, pulling things. And so I'm not afraid because when they see their boss doing this, that was one thing. And secondly, My biggest asset in business, two things, is the actual assets and my staff. Mm -hmm. So my, I don't have this customer's right mentality. Customers sometimes are crazy. Yeah. You know, I, I really don't care much about, because like sometimes they're unrealistic. But for me, my staff is a very important asset because like they are my family. They are the ones who make the business grow or not grow, who makes the service good or not, They're gonna, who keeps the quality of the business high or not. So when they know that they are taken care of and they, are, they matter to me, mm -hmm. that's when the business grow much higher. Yeah. 
But business grow also because of you. Because I, I, I think if you have a good leadership, if you yeah. are a good person, if you have a good human, yeah, I think you know people they can feel it. I mean, kindness costs nothing. Yeah, and takes you everywhere. So just be kind to your people. You know, they're not just slaves. They're actually your family. And if you take care of them properly, like human beings, like they're supposed to be done this way, it grows massively. It's, it's all about having the right team. Because yeah, I'm great, I'm very good at what I do, but I will never become an empire alone. I have to have the right team under me, the right individuals, the right energies under me. The foundation. Exactly. Because yeah. otherwise, you know, I'd be just still doing the same thing. But if I want to scale and I want to expand my business, I need to hire, believe in people, empower them and delegate to them. And that's the very hard part. Very hard part. Yeah, for me, loyalty and honesty are the, the keys. Yeah. Are the keys because... Being trustworthy uh, is a very hard trait to have. Especially in Dubai. Oh, everywhere. Especially in Dubai, trust me. Everywhere in the world. I trust come from that. France. Yeah, yeah. And trust me, like because here, you know, you can see a lot of entrepreneurs, you can see a lot of business. Yeah. You know, people, they, they, they come in Dubai and they want... Uh, just to work to take a little bit from you and to open direct something, you know, you know, yeah, Dubai. No. They want to do like you. I know. Uh, but nobody can do like you. It's okay. It's not a problem because ultimately you just focus on your own lane. Sure. You know, because you're going to have people compete with you all the time. And if I'm going to keep worrying about what's this guy doing, this dude's doing, I will never yeah. do my thing. Just focus on you. Exactly. You know? Let's yeah. I'm glad. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because me, like this happened also to me, you know, and at the beginning, you know, you're a little bit. Okay, you're, as you said, you check on your left, on your right, but you just lose time. Yeah. So don't lose more time, just, just, just be focused. Yeah, focus on you. And maybe find, find better people. Exactly. <laughs> but that's the whole thing. Like, you know, you got to work with people that you enjoy working with, you enjoy the energy. Because for me, it's not about the money. So many times I will have these big bag of money. I will not do it because I know that person is going to be a problem for me in the future. So why would I do that energy in my life? Why would I have a, a short gain with money and long-term headache? Yeah. I don't like that. And what was the moment that um, led you to conceptualize the world's largest inflatable water park? I was going to get bankrupt. Okay. I did a, a move in business, and that move was going to cost me the whole business. Uh, I was going to expand. Uh, I put all the money that I have on the expansion for two new locations. And then a week before the locations come, Mm -hmm. They said, we don't want this anymore. I was like, I paid all this money. I said, I have to pay more money. I said, okay, I am in switch right now. Either I'm going to fail miserably and close my whole business or change the whole story because you write your own story. And then I went in my head. I said, okay, let me take this very negative situation and figure out a way out of it. And I think two hours later, I came out. I like, you know what? I have the location. Let me use these assets together, put it together and make it bigger. And then it was just about to happen the Expo 2020. So I wrote, I love Expo 2020 Dubai. There's one water park. And in the same time, there was another water park open in Saudi Arabia, which was very big. So I made sure I'm double the size. So I took a very negative situation. I was going to get mm -hmm. bankrupt. I'm done. Like, I have no money. I'm broke. I have nothing to do. It's not okay. And this happened. Alhamdulillah, it worked. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, as um, we have a lot of French clients. They are coming in Dubai. Mm. They look for the some activities, you know, yeah. and uh, I'm sure with the kids, they, they go there, you know. Yeah. So, no, we are it, like the it's top, crazy. top uh, 10 things to do in Dubai. We are on the yeah. website of the Dubai Tourism. We are tip advisor choice yeah. uh, for Dubai. So we have all these things done, again, consistency. Mm. You know a little bit about French people? Of course. Yeah? Yeah. You know, we are, we are, we are coming more and more in Dubai, you know. I know, because yeah. what are you going to do in France when you have Dubai? It, yeah. wa it was before the American dream. Now it's the Dubai dream. Yeah. yeah. yeah one day it would be maybe the French dream. No. <laughs> not, not <anymore. laughs> Dubai dream now. <laughs> Dubai right yeah, now. Yeah. Huh? Building the largest inflatable water park in, in the world um, is no small feat, of no. course. Uh, what challenge did you face in bringing this ambitious project to life? Um, to continue with what happened when I was going to get Branca for this, for this one, like I tried to get... Um, in the beginning, get sponsors. Brands come and do this with me and become collaboration. Nobody wants to do it. It's like, we don't have the money, uh, end of the year, and so on and so on. Okay, fine. Uh, I'm against bringing investors because I don't want to be an investor yeah. to be in my books for a small amount of money. So I focus more on doing the sales. And then uh, what we did, I think there was so much challenges with like, you know, permissions, uh, getting people to understand why we're doing the, this, this big size. People mm. complain about, oh, you're taking all the beach. It's like, no, no. I'm deep in the water. You can swim, swim. 
So all these like different images, different people trying to like you know sabotage it, but eventually we make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing is easy, <clears throat> but the key is not to quit. So for how long you have this business? Eleven years. Eleven years, huh? Yeah. Eleven yeah. years. Dubai was not like that, huh? It was. Yeah. It was. No, no, but I think you know to open this kind of business like eleven years ago because yeah, yeah, to, was, like today is easy. Yeah. Today is no, easy. not easy. It's hard. No, but no, yeah. no, no, no. I mean, okay. Uh, it's easy because it's easy to think about this idea right now. Yeah, because somebody did it. But it's hard now to open yeah, this yeah. kind of business. But 11 years ago, I was think... impossible. Yeah. Because exactly. like, what do you mean you want to rent the water? Because mm. that was the approach. Like, I want to rent space in the water. It's like, how do you rent that? And then, like, explaining that. And, like, I remember there was a phase that I've submitted 650 pages of why this works. Yes. So it's not easy. But then, till you get it, you know, that was the mission. But that's the thing. You have to be obsessed enough... To make it happen, and you did it, of course. Your journey might have involved taking calculated risk. Can you share a behind the scenes story or a story of a risk you took that led to a significant re reward? Sorry for my English. I mean, <laughs> more practice we <with> broke it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, story. Sorry, I had one. I had one guy who was a friend who went to my old factory and copied exactly my same concept. Oh, copy paste, exact thing. Uh, I give you exact numbers now. So he spent six hundred and seventy thousand dollars to build the same kind of concept. When he built it, I immediately know. I called him. Hello, Sing congratulations. I'm happy you did this business. If you need any help, I'm here for you. If you need help or setup or maintenance or operation or we can do co marketing, I'm happy here for you. So I I did not attack. I was giving him love. And yeah. Like, and it's like he was surprised. It's like no, no. It's like no, I'm okay. I can do it myself. Okay. Anyways, if you need anything, you have my number, give me a call. Fast forward six months later, he calls me, Ahmed, I'm closing the business. What happened? It didn't work out, so many problems, so on and so on. He called, Would you buy me? It's like, um, let me think about it. Send me a picture. He sent me a picture, I go to a friend of mine who works in a big event company. It's like, do you have any events happening soon and so on? He's like, yes, I have an event next week in Saudi Arabia. So okay, fine. Um, what's the event? It's like, pa -pa -pa, something with water. Check it, what's up? Send a picture of this guy's water park. It's like, yes, I'm looking for this. It's like, my friend, you work there. Let me know what's the maximum you can make. I can take care of you, take care of me. Simple business. Commission, commission. It's like, okay, fine. He said, Ahmed, put an event like this in, in Dubai will cost for four days, maybe 8,000 rams. Something like this. Mm -hmm. 8,000 dollars, sorry. Uh, he said, put, put 980,000. It's like, what? Just do that. I put that, approved. I went to the guy who stole my idea. It's like, hey, I'm ready to buy you. I buy you. It's like, how much do you offer me? It's like, I'll buy it for 90,000. What? This costs 600. It's like, I don't care. Nobody's gonna buy it from you. You want, I buy it for you for 91,000. Sorry, exactly. It's like, it's crazy, come on. It's like 91,000, now cash, now cash, now cash. I went to him an hour later, here's the money. I bought for 670, for 91,000. I rented it for four days for 980. It came back, I rented it again in Dubai four times for 300,000. And then I sold to his cousin for 300,000. And this all happened because of one thing. I gave love. I didn't attack. I kept the bridge open. It's not easy to do that. But I, I always think this is the highest vibration. Of course. And it's very hard. Of course. It's if, very hard. Yeah. For me, if, um, if you... Uh, this is the experience, actually. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the more experience you get in your life yeah. and the more peace you are after, you know? Exactly. Yeah, but at the beginning, I don't think, you know, like, like you know. For, uh, you'd be, yeah, you'd be, what? You could, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, but that's the whole thing because I look at it as a marathon, not a sprint. So I look at the macro of the situation. So, okay, this happened. Okay, fine. He will come again to me because I know how life works. So instead of me burning a bridge and making an enemy, I'll sleep it open. He will come back. You know, yeah. like like Kevin Miss, sometimes this kind of thing happen. But now, yeah, you know, I can see people around me, yeah, more uh, upset than me. I Which said, is pointless, yeah. I said, why are you upset? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They came, they they, they did their things. Yeah, yeah. Let them do the, the Let things. Them be. It's just money. Yeah. You will always make more of it, but you need to have your peace of mind. Exactly. Yeah, peace is a luxury. Mm, yeah. Very nice sentence. Yeah. <laughs> do you think anyone can become an entrepreneur in Dubai? No. Why? No. Because again, the thing is, is the, the word entrepreneur has been thrown everywhere. It's like a sexy word. But entrepreneurship, it's very lonely. It's hard work. It's long hours of work. It's not for everybody. Some people are just better off being 
you know, employees. And yes, the system here is very amazing, it's very supportive. There is opportunities, but again, it's not being just given to you. You need to work. It's not being be given to you because just you are now an entrepreneur, or you open a company, or have a license. It takes more than just doing that. You need to have the right network, the right people around you, the right ethics, the right system. So yeah, it's not for everybody. Yeah, but uh, yesterday, uh, the system was stronger than today because yesterday we had a sponsor example, you mm. know, uh, nobody uh, can open any company, you know, they need to yeah. speak with a sponsor, they need to have a deal with them, but now everyone can open everything. So Dubai is helping also people around the world to open their own business, right? Yeah. But just because you open a company doesn't mean you're going to make, make, make money. Yeah, sure. You know, because people think they're going to open a company today and then next week they're going to be millionaires. It doesn't work that way. You know this. It's nothing straight line. No. It's like up and down, around sure. round about. It's nothing straightforward. I mean, unless if you're doing something illegal, maybe. But otherwise, that's it's not going to happen. You know, if you want to actually be an entrepreneur and be a very good one, it takes longer time. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, let's come back to your uh, business uh, because, you know, real estate is all about location. Mm -hmm. uh, can you share the story behind selecting the perfect spot for your water park? Mm -hmm. And how did this impact your business? Very good. Because I believe don't be a destination, be convenient. So yeah. don't be too far for people to, for them to have to drive too far from you. Because you have to understand the culture of each country and each city and each place. Uh, <clears throat> location, 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 like they say. Uh, in the beginning, I had 17 locations in Dubai. 17. So UAE, in the whole UAE. So yes, that was mainly my ego talking. I want to be everywhere. I want to be a hustler. I want to be everywhere. But the problem with that is like too much overhead, too mm. much things to go wrong. You can't control the quality and things are not the same way. And you can't control people stealing or not stealing you. So eventually we closed all of them and we kept only one, the one in JBR, because I was the only one that actually was making money. Because behind you there's all these hotels and that basically the demographics of people are like Europeans who wants to be in the beach. You know, we have a good seven months of like beach weather in Dubai. So that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. But even, you know, like a lot of people, sometimes they're coming from, uh, to me, they say, yeah, we want nice location, nice location. But, you know, I think in Dubai, uh, for me, it's not just about location. Mm. It's also about your marketing. Yes. And and I'm sure you are good with the marketing. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's like restaurants, you know, some people, so sometimes they open restaurant front of uh, the beach. Yeah. Or uh, in Dubai Mall, but it's not working. It's not working. Yeah. But some people, they are in... In, in the heart of Al Barsha, yeah. crazy. In Busy. Jumeirah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in the middle yeah. of a street, crazy also. Exactly. You know, so it's not j just about location. It's, it's more, location is very important. Because yeah. for me, like, you know, location was very important because, okay, I'm in a place that there is already traffic. So I convert from traffic directly. Yeah. So it's very much passive. So on, so on. And secondly, what we do is very much, we do a lot of uh, content. Like yeah. every single day we do content. That's, that's the key. Either we do ourselves or with influencers every single day. Every single day there's something. Yeah. And that's the key, like being consistent. Consistent is the word. Yeah. Inflatable water parks are a relatively new concept in the region. What did you do about educating and creating demand along the location population? Uh, having a purpose behind it. So, so first of all, I understand my business. I'm in the business of creating <clears throat> happy memories. Yeah. So I sell an emotion. My emotion is people having fun. So we document people, real people having real fun on the water parks. That was the first stage. Second stage, the design of the water parks. So the designs always have purpose behind them. Dubai, I love Dubai. Habibi come to Dubai. Mm. I love Expo 20. So always have some kind of meaning behind them. So that always, hey, this park says this. So it becomes more of an interesting thing to do. So like, you know, just making sure that you know we are in the right places for people to see us and understand what's the concept behind it. Mm. It's nothing too complicated if you understand the emotion, emotion of humans. Yeah. And um, as a successful Emirati entrepreneur, what advice would you give to aspiring business owners looking to establish themselves in Dubai's competitive market today? Mm. Uh, I think very much um, start. Because uh, people always overthink things. Yeah. And, and overthinking would only create more thinking. Uh, if action, so, so you are overthinking it would never create clarity. Action will create clarity. So sometimes when people want to go and, and you want to see the 10 steps ahead of them. No, for you to say, see step number two, you got to go on step number one. So start doing things, you know, stop overthinking what is this, what is this? This is only insecurities. Mm. Start trying and fail. 
fail a lot, fail forward, and fail early. Because the earlier you, you come to failure, the earlier you come to success. Yeah, for me, like what I like to say, I like to say that I need to go ahead, but I do it step by step. Yes. You know, like, yeah, yeah. like for me, I need to put one feet here to put another one there. Exactly. You can't just stand here and I want to go 10 steps ahead. No, you can't do that. You can't see 10 steps ahead of you. Yeah. Step by step. Because on the way, you're going to meet the right people. You're going to learn the life skills and exactly. then you're going to become the person you want to be. Yeah. And, and, and also because now maybe you're thinking about things that you cannot control. Yeah. And also you're, th you're thinking about things that uh, like, which is like, it will not happen like exactly. in the future. Just, yeah, just as you said, just do it. Yeah. Uh, action is better The only than thing in life that you have control in is one thing, is in the equation of life, the only thing you have control in is one thing, is your perception to this. How you receive this, that's it. Because things will happen to you every day. You have control on them, no control on them. It's how you react to them or not react to them. Your exactly. perception to this will be the key of your success or failure. Yeah, but for me, you know, like uh, I did many business also. Uh, of course, my biggest business is today. Yes, is in Dubai, mm. uh, and many things happen, you know. But the way you you react when you're facing some issue or or some also good news or some uh, to have not money or to have more money. Yeah, this this will um, will have an impact, you know, in in like in your uh, exactly in your future business also. Yeah. yeah. Because uh, as you said, like you have to stay peace. You have to take it like normal, easy. Exactly. Not but over, uh, you know. Because again, your perception is very important. Like sometimes mm -hmm. I'll go some, you know, very successful things, but then like it's like, okay, do I what do I have control on? Because you have a problem. There's two mm -hmm. solutions. Can you fix it or not? If you can't fix it, then why are you worrying? You can't fix it, also why are you worrying? Mm -hmm. Worry is just nothing but waste of imagination. Mm -hmm. Just action then. Yeah, yeah. Dubai is known for um, its futuristic projects and development. Mm -hmm. How do you see the future of the leisure and entertainment industry in the city evolving? One of the most important pillars in Dubai uh, vision is actually tourism and sport. So since I'm in a tourism sector, I'm just focusing so much on that. I see so much potential in it. And we just, every single uh, year, we just growing and adapting and just making it better and better. How you manage your, your company from inside? I mean, because, you know, like we just joke about, uh, you know, because I came late in this podcast, right? He, you came, said, where's gonna, he came 30 minutes late. Okay. Yes. I was here on time. Yes. And I, where do you live? Uh, in downtown. JBR. Yes. JBR. Far away. I was here on time. No yeah. respect for time. <sighs> Fired. Yeah, you you just fired me, my cameraman, my yeah. marketing guy. You well, fired everyone. Yeah, because you're doing the job. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Ahmed, I know also, you know, as an um, entrepreneur, you have also some passion. Like on the side, we're talking about it. Passion, uh, yeah, yeah. Passion. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry for my Franklish. Yes, yeah, it's, it's very Franklish. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but it's nice, no? It's okay. I accept it. You don't like it? I, I have that, no choice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So it's not passion? Passion. It's passion. Yes. I would say passion. Yes. Okay. I always say passion in my life. Nobody told me, but. See, they thank, don't care. See, I care. Thank you to be honest. Exactly. Not, thank nobody's you. honest. It's the yeah. most important. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, as all the entrepreneurs in, uh, in the world, you yeah. have passion. Yes. You know, I, uh, because we're talking about what you like uh, and what. As you, even you told me about some collection you have. Yeah. So, this is important for you? I think uh, the most important thing is. Um, Having the right relationships in life, yeah, you know, with your family and your loved ones, that's very important. Uh, for me, my, my passion is traveling. I love traveling so much. I've been to 99 countries. So that's like one of my biggest things. Like, you know, it's not about material things to have. They're good to have, but it's like experiences for me is more important. That's that's a big passion for me, tra traveling, experiencing people, cultures, music, yeah. and food. And family, yeah. Yeah, that's okay. very important. Balancing work and life is a common challenge. What strategy do you use to maintain a healthy work-life balance? There's no balance. Okay. There's no balance. Okay, thank you. There's no uh, balance. <laughs> <laughs> there's no balance. There's, uh, there's really no balance. Like, you know, because uh, yeah, work is very important. Like, you know, as a man, as, as a provider, you need to be focused on what you do as providing. Okay. So sometimes, you know, you need to be out doing what you got to do for days and days and weeks because that's very important to provide for the whole family. Yeah. You know, just being home doing nothing, is, it's not going to feed the family or grow the family. But like, it's important to like consciously have time given away for your loved ones and your family and spend time with them when it's matter and do intentionally implanting to them. That's very important. Mm. Yeah.
So for me, I always do at least two or three times a year. I take the whole family with me traveling for some place and just have fun together. Yeah, I think for me, it's important to, to have uh, your family around you. Mentorship can be invaluable. Have you had any mentors who played a significant role in your professional development? Mentors, no. Okay. I think me failing a lot was the biggest teacher because the difference between learning and losing is you stop trying. Uh, but uh, I think five years ago, I started bringing um, advisors who are very, very powerful, very, yeah. very expensive, but very more experienced and much smarter than me. That gave me a much better um, keys to handle a lot of problems and switches that I go through in my days. That was very powerful, having the right members in my team was very, that's, for me was very valuable. Plus I am very selective of where I am. So you never see me doing, being around people who are like less than me. Nothing against that, but like I like to be in, in the room that is always people are smarter, richer, more powerful than me. This way I can learn and grow. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, like even we said that uh, you are uh, the average of the your five yeah. people. Because I see it's interesting because you have the, you have the you you day one and the day twos. Day one people are the people you will grow up with, you know, 15, 20 years. Of course. So these are good to have and around just to keep you rooted. Okay, because all they talk about is like we were this, we did that, and we were this, but they just always limited that. The day two is the people you meet in your future that you th make you thrive and grow. So you have to have a balance between the old ones and new ones. Not every old one you have to keep around you because some of them are just leashes. They just take money from you or just want to have energy or they're envious. So you have to make sure that the right rooting around you and you have the right people to push you. These two are very important to have. Mm. Lastly, what's next for you and your business ventures in Dubai? Uh, Dubai, yes, but I'm doing more for scaling internationally now. Nice. So we're doing a lot of, the, the, the idea or the plan is, is for the next 12 months, we do four more Guinness records. So four more world records and the biggest something. Uh, we're doing also big things in Saudi Arabia and Egypt. Okay. Very big things there. I have uh, Ahmed a question, uh, which is not here actually. Yes, freestyle. Here okay. we go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, got, now he will have fun now. Yeah. yeah. So, what, so what do you think about, uh, about the market now in Dubai? So because a lot of people you know, from outside, they yeah. don't know the country are are uh, saying that uh, the market, the market, you know, recent market uh, is very high right now. Okay, good question. Um, we, we have to zoom out for a second and see where is Dubai. Sure. So Dubai, okay, safest places in the world. You have a very amazing lifestyle. The lifestyle provided by from the malls, the restaurants, the going out and so on, it's, it's amazing. It's like nothing compares to this. And this comes from a guy that I went around the world. Nothing compares to this. So the lifestyle provides and safety in a system. Yeah. It's very important. So that's like the first stage we look at. Uh, number two, it's not slowing down. This first quarter, we're already 18.9% increase in rent and yeah. resale. That's huge. you know. And again, there's no slowing down. Like every single week you have new projects, off-plan projects. Every, every, and then they all sold out in the first hour or two hours in a day. So that shows you that the market is very healthy. Uh, secondly, uh, thirdly, um, you have so much people coming from China and Russia and Europe now. So I think the market will not stop for a while. Mm. You know, I think it's not gonna stop for a while. It's gonna be still growing consistently. So you saw Dubai uh, only with the sand. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I, I still remember Dubai when, you know where the canal is now? Yes. Safa Park? Yeah, yeah. It sure. ends there. Okay. I know Dubai when it ends there in Safa. I remember when there was no Boja Arab. I remember when Boja Arab was there and between Boja Arab to Marina, there was nothing. There was only one hotel, the Sheraton Hotel, that's yeah. it. So I remember all these things. So I've seen the growth, I've seen the cycles, but this is still gonna be for a while. Yeah. And from your eye, like, so, uh, so let's talk, you know, about the vision of the share, because, yeah. uh, so for me, it's not like everyone who can do what he did. This is like no, no, no. crazy for me. He's a crazy entrepreneur for me. Like, like yeah, imagine. visionary, he's, he's a leadership he and a visionary. Yeah. You know, he just, again, and the key is like, it's, the people around him. So like he have very strong advisors, very strong team that is very empowered. That they, Again, to make a new rule takes one day. We don't have this whole parliament thing and like, we, no, no. Yeah. This is a rule that will help the society and the community get it done. Sure. Yeah, that's the best thing about it. Yeah, for, for like for me, I'm, I'm very, you know, excited like yeah. uh, about his vision, about what, like what he did. Yes. His new, his project. As you said, from for me, the market, even if it's going down because of 
uh, something or something, how, how, yeah. it would go. Because every time, yeah, yeah exactly. Because every time, like there was a war in Russia and Ukraine, what happened? Mm -hmm. We got more money. We got more business. Sure, the market moved. China is closing up. We got more business. Anywhere that closes in the world, we get more business because this is very attractive. Also, no tax. There's no income tax. That's huge. You, know, you understand it? Back in France, how much is your, is your income tax? Uh, more than 50. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Yeah. That's insane. So again, these are very attractive things that make you come here. So I don't think, like I said in the, in the, in earlier, there was the American dream before, now it's the Dubai dream. And that's why it's very powerful. Yeah, yeah. I totally agree with you, you know. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so if you have some, some something to say to people, they want not to become entrepreneur, but just to start, you know, to invest in Dubai, yeah. what, you, what you will say? I think a very good place is real estate. A very yeah. good place is real estate, you know, buy off plans, that's always good to have. You know, and when you mature, you can always reset that for good money. Or you can keep it up and just have Airbnb. You know, there's so many things you can do in Dubai. It's very healthy. And there's so much amazing individuals in Dubai that can help you do this. Of course. Yeah. You know, like, <clears throat> I saw some people post-COVID, mm. they came in Dubai mm -hmm. to have a, to to start a new business in Dubai. You know, like some some people, they, they did real estate. Some people, they did rent a car. Some people, they did, yes. you know, activities. Yeah. You know, if you, like, if you see how the market is now compared to 21, just after COVID. Yeah. Just if the same people invested in one good property, yeah, oh my God. it could make more money than uh, even uh, yeah, opening like, a business, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Because like, last, like if you bought, yeah, in that two years, you were at least four times the money, at least. Exactly. At least four times the money. Yeah, it's just, as you said, you need a good advisor. Yeah. So, But that's the thing, finding a good advisor is very hard. Finding the right people who are like, you know, legit, genuine, and real is, is hard. But you know, you can see who's doing, who's not doing, who's fake, who's not, if you have some emotional yeah. intelligence. Yeah, so I come back to passion. Yes. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. me personally, I work with passion. You know, this is the, you know, what attract uh, attract me, you know? Yeah. Because I, I like my work, uh, even, yes, money is here. Money yeah. for me, as I say, it just, uh, it just, the way, but but it's not. It's like, a tool. Yeah, money is a, see, money is a tool. It's not the goal. Yeah, exactly. And again, people, the goal is to have money. It's like, listen, you're gonna have the money fast, but then you're gonna lose mm -hmm. it because you never went through the journey of getting the money. Like people, I want to win the lottery. You're gonna win the lottery six months. You're gonna be broke again because you don't have the mindset how to work the money. Mm -hmm. So you need to go through the process. And you know, people are obsessed with the results, not the journey and the process. That's the problem. Like you know, uh, I meet a lot of. People, you know, now they have money. Yeah, they're yeah. a millionaire. That okay, billionaire. I don't know, but millionaire. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, and it's, uh, you know, I always have the, like the same feeling. You know, I'm I'm asking like in my head because mm. most of them, they are uh, they don't look happy. Mm. You know, like you yeah. know the, this feeling because they you know they're running, 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 about, chasing, 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 ch but chasing money. Yeah, and <clears throat> you know, always like you know, I'm asking them, you know, like. Are you happy? Mm. The same answer, no. Wow. Why? Because, you know, I'm working too much, because this, because this. And one day, you know, I, I spoke to someone, you know, and he asked me, he asked me one question. He told me, you know, how you can see someone rich? I said, mm. for me, you know, like in my mind, yeah. rich, money, Cars, rich, car assets, houses, yeah. you know, rich, of course, yeah. family, everything is something. No, he told me no. Uh, is when uh, I mean I don't know how to say in English, but it's like if you accept and you're okay with what you have, mm. means that you're rich people. Yes, you know I that's agree. it. Whatever the money you have in your yeah. account, if you accept it, because someone who has one million dollars, if he wants ten million, he will never be rich. Yeah. Because he will want more, more. He's and never more. happy with what he have. That's exactly. content with have. Yeah. Because I, I come from a, like a. I'm always happy, but never satisfied. As in like, I'm happy with what I have, but not satisfied in a sense that I always want to do more. Exactly. Because if you rest, you rust, you know? So like always push for more, because like, like somebody asked me if somebody comes in buy your company's all cash right now, you know, will you do it? It's like, and then do what? Do nothing? That'd be sad. Mm -hmm. Sit down on the beach all day, every day for the next one. That's just horrible life. Mm -hmm. That's pointless life with no purpose. I'm not gonna do that. Because you need to be doing something all your life. Then what's your advice for someone who may, who's still thinking about coming, investing, living in Dubai? Stop thinking and do it. 
Yes, actually. I said, why, why are you thinking too much? What's the, what are you resolving? What are you thinking? In? You know, is your life, how, I mean, you want your miserable life wherever you are at now, or you want to have the sun and the beaches and good food and good people and make money in the same time? It's a given. And safety. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Ahmed, thank you so much for coming. You're welcome. Uh, we had a lot of fun today. We, off plan, oh, there's so many bloopers in the back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so just the last word, yeah. like uh, what's the, what the next from Ahmed? Watch me do it. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. I don't, disc- I don't talk about what I'm going to do, I just do it. So guys, follow yeah. him yeah. on his uh, YouTube channel, on his Instagram. Thank don't, you so don't, don't follow me. Don't like anything, please. Don't. Don't. Otherwise, they will fire you. Don't, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, brother. Right. Thank you, brother.